my friends. It's um, Sunday, so it's the beginning of our week here. People enjoyed last time that I shared what I was wearing, actually, so I thought, why not? <sighs> Shifting genres in this vlog, you know. It might be kind of hard to see because of the light, but... Yeah, you know, one of my favorite combinations, just like a big um, buttoned t-shirt, or like blouse, and jeans. Um, the shirt is vintage, like secondhand. Um, this necklace is from Majuri, and these jeans are from Monkey. Um, and these sandals I bought in Florence, Italy, but they're Clark's. Like I bought them secondhand, but they're from Clark's. So very comfortable. So that's my <laughs> outfit of the day. I'm just gonna put my bag together and sit for coffee and read before I go to work. Um, I'm enjoying Second Place by Rachel Cusk so much. So I'm really, really excited to like drink, uh, to read that over coffee. I just had to share with all of you this box of vegetables, isn't that? Beautiful. And look at this really, really cute little pineapple. That is so cute. We try as much as we can not to um, use plastic. I mean, it's sometimes in the city we live in, it's pretty impossible. But for vegetables, we try to um, just go to the market and get vegetables like this without any plastic. Ohad would like it clarified that he's the one that goes and gets all the vegetables, so when I say we, I mean he. You have something to say? No. Hello, dear friends. Uh, let's talk about what I'm reading. I'm just sat here on the floor with some red wine. So, we're binge-watching Bridgerton. Yeah, so I'm not sure how much reading I'm gonna get done tonight, because we have two more episodes left, and like, clearly the rest of our evening is dedicated to that. But I did want to update you anyways. So, Second Place by Rachel Cusk. Loving it, loving it, loving it, loving it. I'm 51% done. I would again just like to thank FSG uh, Publishing for sending me the um, digital arc of this. It's my first one, so like you know that I'm gonna squeeze the juice out of it. I'm loving it. I love her writing so much. She just blends so many things that I like about writing like she's so smart and intelligent and like in a way it's a novel but in another way i can read it and highlight things that are like lessons for life so yeah and then she can also like describe i don't know nature in like a very even like lyrical and poetic way while also like understanding the nitty gritty of life and like similar to what I said about outline that it reads like life. I took some notes and I thought that I would just already start sharing them. Basically there's a woman who's referred to in the book's name is M and she is the whole book is being told as like a retelling like she is telling this person man named Jeffers um, she's relaying to him kind of what happened so we're the book is her telling him a story kind of so i just thought that was really interesting that like it's told through a retelling of events to another person and her and her husband 
are living on a marsh somewhere in a sort of very re remote location and they have a daughter. They have another property, like a small building on their property called The Second Place, which they use to host artists for um, residencies. So immediately I was like, Rachel Cusk plus like, sh they invite a painter to come have an artist residency on their marshy property. I was like, this book is everything that I want. So the situation is basically M, this woman, uh, loves this painter who's referred to by the name L. And she loves his paintings. She kind of stumbled upon an exhibition of his on the street one day and like fell in love with his paintings. And so she wrote to him and said, maybe you should come do a residency at our property. We invite artists, you should come. So the story like is unfolding as Elle and also an unexpected female guest um, arrive to their house and like kind of check into the second place. <laughs> Whoa, can't talk. This is my first glass of wine. Okay. So I wrote, what exactly is being told to Jeffers and are there things that are omitted? Like, are there things that are not being included in her retelling of these events? Um, because, and someone else mentioned it, she's like a bit of a um, unreliable narrator because she's retelling this story and also she, of course she's coming to she feels a certain type of way about the situation that everything that took place and so you feel like she's emo emotionally charged to these events um although she keeps saying that like she wants to tell the truth about it and she doesn't want Jeffers to just feel what she feels about the situation. She wants to give him like all the facts. I don't know if that makes any sense. So I was also thinking about like, like influ the idea of like influence and like how we tell our stories and like if I were to retell some event in my life to another person like what, what details would I include? What wouldn't I include? Like how would I design the truth to them? So that just like something that's coming up in my head. Also she uses exclamation points a lot, which I find really interesting and, and funny and it gives like instantly a personality to this M character. Also because it's, it's rare that I read like literature that has a lot of exclamation points it's just not very common to at least of what i've read some other um notes i wrote are mm, uh, this book is also about well we'll see once i finish it but it's definitely and rebecca said it also in her video it's definitely about or revolving around male privilege and on the opposite side of that what it means to be a female and also motherhood. And I wrote that it's refreshing to see a point of view that doesn't just wholeheartedly glorify motherhood and make it something that every woman is just, they're only supposed to love and sacrifice everything and their own feelings and their own autonomy for their children. Um, and like, I also enjoy that the narrator is like a middle-aged woman. She's, I think like 50. And I feel like I, I don't know if I'm normally reading from the perspective of younger narrators, but I, I just thought that that was, this was a nice um, perspective to have a character from. I'm butchering this whole video. This M character is also like kind of obsessed with freedom. I feel like she keeps talking about freedom and how she feels like she never had it or doesn't, like she, she said something like, well, I should just read you the passage. So she's talking about art and freedom and beauty, like, and I wrote lack of freedom because of roles women, like, are um, expected to play in life. And, like, also she's really, 
trying to find her like sense of purpose on this marsh. I feel like she keeps oscillating between like her life before her marriage and her life now. The expectations of herself or perceptions of her of herself from others, but also just like her with herself and inside um like what it means for her to be a woman. It's also about like living with what we invent for ourselves. And also I wrote sometimes the desire to just lose control, being locked or compartmentalized by the constructs of being a woman. And that she like keeps feeling that Elle, this male artist is like a fully integrated person that has like full freedom to like live and create and just um, exist in the world, kind of. I don't know if any of these thoughts are very um, clear. <laughs> what I also really like in, in this book is like the sense of tension. I feel like there's a constant like tension tension with like expectation and when things don't meet that like she has a certain expectation for this painter that she loves like she feel and he what she's drawn to it are his landscape paintings and she lives on this beautiful marsh and she feels like she's been looking at her environment almost like through his eyes like how like imagining how he would paint the marsh and how he could paint the marsh with like truth and it would be what it really is um and so then when he arrives and like i can say like things are not going as planned like in the vibe and this extra person that he brings along which is this like kind of flamboyant like woman that is sort of like um has like a threatening presence to M and also like is shaking her sense, her own sense of femininity. And so yeah, I'm kind of like really intrigued. Um, I feel like shit might hit the fan at some point and I would love that. Rachel Cusk always has me wondering if I miss something, but in a good way. Um, definitely she's exploring themes, like bigger themes behind this uh, situation that she's describing in the book. I mean, she's definitely talking about art, she's talking about identity, she's talking about male identity versus female identity and beauty and freedom, freedom in life, freedom in, um, and freedom in art. Um, so I feel like the artist, like this tension between an artist and a non-artist and like how they maybe take in the world and, and, um, show it. I hope that some of those thoughts were like coherent, but also I'm like halfway through the book. So I feel like those are my thoughts like up until this point, I'm probably going to watch Bridgerton and maybe I'll read before bed. We've got a pretty full work week this week. Also, it's Ohad's uh, birthday week. Um, on Tuesday, it's his birthday. Um, but pretty much we only really have like um, evenings free. So I, I have like a feeling it's gonna be an evening vibe vlog um, that I'll like meet and talk to you in the evenings. Also, as always, I'm going to link some reviews of this book down below. It's always like because I'm insecure that like my review is not good, <laughs> but also I just think that like Rebecca's thoughts on this book, like she's always fucking brilliant. So like you should definitely listen to her thoughts on this book. And also Alex from What Page Are You On? Um, I think also CJ talked about it, if I'm not mistaken, but I started to watch Alex's um, from what page are you on? His video, because he posted a recent video about this book. And halfway through, I actually was like, oh, I think I'm actually gonna wait and watch this review after I finish because I start to think that maybe these reviews that I watch, like, 
cause me to look at the book from a specific lens, which I think is also interesting, and it, I, I'm sure it helps me pick up on things that maybe I wouldn't have picked up on in some ways. Um, but also, I, I want to, like, um, see truly what I get from the book. So I'm, like, at a crossroads between, like, liking to watch reviews about books that I haven't read yet, but at the same time not wanting to, like, fully influence my perspective on what I'm getting from the writing, like, how I'm reading between the lines. Anyway, I'm gonna link those two, um, beautiful souls down downstairs. Downstairs, yeah, I'm gonna call the description bar downstairs, and then you can go watch. <laughs> Cheers. Someone's birthday soon. It is mine. It's yours. Tomorrow. Look at this beauty. Modest, modest, pow! Pow! Modest, 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 pow! Nipple, also. It's someone's birthday today! Wow, I feel beautiful. Hi, happy Thursday. Just showered and I'm gonna sit down and film the 20 questions book tag. I was tagged by my babe, Iggy. Um, so I really enjoyed her video and I just, I wanted to film something today, like a sit down video and I thought that that could be perfect. We did a lot of cleaning. So the furniture is like all in the corners of the house uh, to clean the floor laundry and like just kind of day off kind of activities also i probably have salad in my teeth that's cute anyways um yeah so i'm gonna film that video and then probably do a little bit of reading i really want to finish second place today um but i'm not sure that that's gonna happen realistically but i'll try so yeah i'll see you later all right i just filmed that um 20 questions book tag. That was fun. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think if I have anything other than that to update you with. <sighs> but other than that, um, it's a lazy day. Pod's out with a friend for coffee. Um, so I'm gonna probably edit a little bit, read a little bit. Yeah. So we woke up to a super strange fog, a very, very foggy day outside, although the sun starts to peek out now. Um, but I wanted to show you actually, I, I never showed much of our house other than just things that are seen like passing by in the vlogs, but we made this change with a table and I thought I could share with you. Um, normally our dining table goes this way, long ways, so we flip it, um, but we moved it horizontally this way, um, to clean the floor, and then we just thought, why not, like, change? I, I love it how it 
used to be, but sometimes you just need to, I don't know, flip something. And what's really nice actually is that if you sit on this side, um, then you kind of have this nice view of the rest of the house and to the balcony. So I can sit here with my Kindle and coffee. So that's just a little something I thought would be nice to share with you guys. So the sun is out actually and shining at this point, which is great. I thought I would have to be in the like foggy winter vibe today, which is also fine. Um, but now I can wear like a short sleeve. <laughs> we actually have this um, sliding uh, door with a mirror. So I figured actually this is probably the best place to uh, show you what I'm wearing. Excuse the messy bed. Today's category is chic safari. So I'm wearing these um, navy blue um, like wide leg trousers, uh, which is from like a local brand here in Tel Aviv called Trez. Um, if they do an online shop or something, I'll um, link it below. And this shirt, wow, I got it secondhand somewhere. A lot of my clothes are secondhand. Um, and I don't remember where. I want to say either in Italy or in the States. It gives me um, like summer memories. I've worn it on so many holidays. Um, so it's like bringing, it always brings me like the smell of suntan lotion and um, just the summer feelings, but that's basically it. I don't know if you care about this stuff. I'm just, um, responding to some comments. Oh, sorry about the glare on the glasses. Yeah, I'm just like gonna reply to comments on my videos, um, all from all these like sweet angels, sweet, sweet angels of booktube. Probably edit this week's vlog a little bit. I try to do like a bit each day so that it doesn't like become a big, huge responsibility in the very end. Also just sat here watching um, Sunny's channel, a Sunny Book Nook. They are gorgeous. Are you kidding me? I found them through um, Grace's uh, booktube recommendation video, and I am forever grateful. No one speak about this. I mean, I've heard very few people speak about a lot of these books, actually, and I love reading books that people haven't really heard about before. Um, I love developing my own original opinions about them. So the next book I have- Oh my god, yes. Also, hi, CJ. Hi. Wow, I am like almost to the end of second place, and I have to go because I'm meeting my friend. Um, but, wow, like- Fucking Rachel Cusk. Like, we have got some stuff to talk about you guys later. Okay, I finished second place. <sighs> wow, I took a shower. I always do this. I'm like, I finish a book and I, I know that I'm gonna talk about it um, while the thoughts are still fresh, but like they're too fresh directly in the moment of finishing it. So I like, I'm like, I'll take a shower and I will like just be with myself for a second and see if things also get clearer for me in my head. My camera was flashing at me that it was gonna die, dead battery, so hopefully this is better. Um, 
Fucking Rachel Cusk. Wow. She's so crazy. She's amazing. Okay, so I wanted to start... Okay, wait, let me get my thoughts. I wrote more notes um, in this notebook. Blah, blah, blah. As I was just uh, marking on Goodreads that I finished it, I just wrote like a really immediate kind of response, which I feel like sort of wraps up... Um, I mean, it doesn't wrap up all the things I feel about this book because I feel like so many of those things I can't even put into words, but I'll just read you what I wrote. I said, Rachel fucking Cusk, honestly. A beautiful, ravaging piece, art as truth, and what, is, what does truth even mean? How does it play into creation? This deals with the narratives we write for ourselves. A lot about womanhood, motherhood, male privilege, and female will. Freedom, what is freedom, and freedom from identity, expectations, and our own narratives, specifically from the point of view of a female in the world run by patriarchy. <laughs> and then I said, plus a lot of gorgeous prose, nature descriptions, and art, 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 five stars. I love this book. It's, it's really, really powerful and thought-provoking and as always her writing is just so good i feel like there's not i don't have the right descript like adjective for it it's just so good i also think after having read it fully um if you are someone who prefers more plot in your reading um then this may, and you're interested in Rachel Cusk, which I feel like is sort of uh, contradictory because she's never really plot driven. <laughs> so I don't know why. But if you're re if you're watching this and you're hearing about her and you want to um, experience her voice, then but you like plot, then I think that this one would be the one to maybe go for because definitely in comparison to to like outline for example there is somewhat of a plot it's not just uh, meandering and like it, like existing in one's thoughts it's very there is a plot and actually i spoke about this sense of tension before and i thought that it was like like building and building and building the main character m with l the painter that's doing the um, residency. Also a, a build of tension with M and herself and M and her daughter and M and her husband Tony. Uh, so there is just like a lot of tension being built and I I said in the last clip of me talking about this that like I felt like shit was gonna hit the fan and it does hit the fan. There's a point like around the end, like as we're approaching the end that I feel like things just start to spill over. It's so hard to explain all the things that I, I feel about this book. I do feel with this one in comparison to Outline, I do feel like it was more difficult for me in, in the sense that literally she uses difficult words and sometimes very, very complex sentences or sentences also with um, symbols or it's hard to explain but there were passages that I would read and I would read them multiple times and I still wasn't sure what they meant just some very complex shit in there and I I was ha having to really really try to digest it and I think I definitely missed some things or they went over my head but it's okay I'm I'm um I'm growing and I'm learning and I'm also identifying the fact that like there are just some things that are, um, yeah, that I don't have answers for, that I can't fully understand at this particular point. Some things that I wrote that this book is dealing with is like what it means to be seen, recognized, and validated in specific connection with being a woman in a world run by patriarchy and this m character is really dealing with like her own existence and like whether her older selves the older selves of her still exist or whether 
the way her marriage used to be still exists or like are we the same people that we were so like change and transformation i don't want to spoil anything um there's a situation that happens in the second place and there's imagery like related to adam and eve um but kind of like grotesque and which was just this was section was amazing of this book and i just thought that also that was an interesting choice adam and eve and like that it further pushes this like male and female narrative and also like continues to like demonize or like um put blame on eve like put blame on the female for poisoning the situation and that like this art and painting and sense of truth that M is um, that she regards painting to be is like flipped and like truth becomes this like ugly and like destructive painting and also I thought that the, the painting also like all over the walls is a little bit like possessive and like yeah male privilege, male possessiveness and like patriarchy vibes. Also, I thought like she's talking about the force of narrative and plot in your life. We create the narrative that we should be sometimes that, that are dictated by um, society. There's some gorgeous prose about nature and also a scene where M and her daughter go swimming in like part of the marsh just fucking stunning honestly like the description of that whole situation and the water and like it was a wow like a visual wow okay literally my camera died twice so i'm gonna like really try to speed through this i thought this book really deals with like female will and the will to sort of like i don't know i took it like to be a woman in the world like there is a certain amount of constant will you have to have in order to not be taken down by all of the opposing forces this is sort of like a very blanket maybe way to put it but i definitely felt like this character is dealing with her own sense of Will. And M kind of sees this painter, L, as like representing freedom, free identity, the ability to be, to change, to be free from being identified as something or expected of something or like safe or saved from responsibility. Also like he, he represents like a sense of ownership and property, like male privilege, really like, like being able to be truthful without like borders or like without being confined by roles that you're expected to play like all of the things that are the privileges that men are given and not women and on the opposite side she feels like plagued with responsibility sometimes and perhaps that is her fate like to be not freed of things and to be always um, responsible for others, and that she's expected to inconvenience herself on the account of other people. And towards the end of the book, she talks about like, since she's retelling this story to a man named Jeffers, she talks about like, after she's said the whole thing and you got like basically the whole book, she's like, I wish I was more present in the moment and like that so that I could tell you more. And you're like, wow, so what was left out? And like, just, attention in life and like when do we really live inside the present moment and when are we inventing things either later or actually also in the moment another thing i wrote is when you're so steeped in your reality that you wish you could know what unreality is like and she starts and she sort of comes to a conclusion that maybe art is not searching to reveal the truth that true art is seeking to capture the unreal instead of the real and i just wow i really need to chew on that and um yeah that's a, that's wow i'm gonna sit with that the true true art seeking to capture the unreal that's really interesting anyway those are my thoughts on second place 
sorry if I completely butchered it. Um, and I'm also really interested, while I was reading, I was like, I'm really interested what other people will get from this book. If I know of other reviews, um, I know of a few, then I will put them in the description bar. I think I said that before. And you can see other perspectives and thoughts. It's out May 4th from FSG. I think you gotta read it. It's really fucking good. Good morning, everyone. It's Saturday. It's a beautiful Saturday morning. Um, I'm just sat in my new coffee reading spot. I got my coffee and my Kindle. And probably I will talk to you in a bit after I shower and I look somewhat presentable. <laughs> okay, so this vlog is really long, um, so I'm gonna cut it now. <laughs> I'm just taking a drive, actually, with um, Mai, our friend who you've seen in vlogs before. Um, we're gonna go drive to the north and pick Ohad up and maybe stop on the way, like, somewhere beachy and beautiful and just make, like, a small little day trip out of it. So that, those are my, that's my plan. But I am starting a new book and I felt like short stories were sort of like my vibe. Um, so I started I Hold a Wolf by the Ears by Laura Vandenberg. I've heard about this from a few um, booktubers. And then Jalen did his amazing video on like short story collections, which all sounded like super interesting to me. And I love that video, I'll link it downstairs. He was again, kind of like, showing and talking about this book and I just, I had to do it finally and I love the title so much. Sending you all love and hugs and yeah, um, see you in the next one.